Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and on this episode, we're going to make a Pi 1541 that works with the Commodore 64. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to build a Pi 1541. As a matter of fact, I've actually already built one here in uh, prototype form, um, just using a breadboard and all the components. Um, now, a lot of you might be asking, why is this necessary? Why not just use something like an SD uh, to IEC device? And while these devices do work just fine, they're not really emulators so much as they're 1541 compatible. And so there are certain things, like if you put a copy protected image on here, um, it will not work. If, and there's certain fast loaders and things like that um, that will not work and you have to go back to using a regular disk drive. So with the Pi 1541, it uses a Raspberry Pi and a couple of other components and then you'd make a custom made cable. Um, and what it does is it actually has the actual 1541 ROM um, in the software along with uh, it completely 100% emulates the 6502 processor that you'll find inside the Commodore 1541 disk drive. So what you get here is an actual 100% emulated Commodore 1541 disk drive. So everything works. If you put copy uh, protected software on there, um, it'll read the sectors the exact same way uh, from the disk images and all of the things that go along with it. And so this is a far more, in my opinion, a far more elegant solution. Along with it, it has a little OLED display um, that you can use to scroll through your different images and select them. And it kind of gives you a little bit more feedback. And what I did was 3D printed a, uh, and I have the whole, all the other components off to the side, but 3D printed an actual uh, kind of Commodore looking uh, disk drive enclosure for the Raspberry Pi and all these components. Um, that you can get off Thingiverse. I didn't make this, it's somebody else made it, and so I'm just using theirs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this from the prototype form that it's in today and put it on a breadboard, um, sorry, a circuit board, and we're gonna solder up all the components, put it inside this case, and then once we're done with that, um, I'll take you on a tour of how it works. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is create a circuit board to hold the OLED display and the front panel selector switches. And those will be visible in the front of the case. So the OLED will go here and the selector switches will go here. So what I did is I got one of these really cheap circuit boards. There's a link in the description for these um, off of Amazon. And I just used a razor knife and scored it and then popped it and created a little bitty circuit board that fits exactly in the spot where the uh, OLED display and the switches are going to go. And uh, I did use a little bit of sandpaper to uh, smooth the edges um, of it, but that's about it. And so let's go ahead and start soldering that together. So next up, I need to connect um, a wire to each one of the buttons. These will go to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi um, for all the selector switches. And so basically I've just got some, uh, it's kind of a greenish brownish wire here. Um, and I put um, these uh, JST connectors on the other end of them. And uh, quite honestly, this is nothing more than just a, uh, a bunch of JST connectors I got off of Amazon and a little crimp tool. Um, that will make it really easy to connect all of this to the Pi, and then um, in future, if I want to make any changes, it'll also make that very easy. So let's solder these on. Okay, so we're getting really close. Now all we need to do is solder on the little OLED screen, and of course it will go right behind the front fascia. 
So let's solder that on and then we'll be complete with most of the soldering. Next up, it's time to start putting everything together, and so let's start assembly. So I got to thinking about all of these wires and what I'm going to do um, to put them all together. And so most of them will go to individual pins on the, uh, on the GPIO header. Um, however, there's a lot of them that are going to be common. Like, for example, I made this drive indicator light and this power light for the front of the case. And um, it has a ground wire for each one. And so um, I didn't want to worry about tying all these grounds together and that was gonna be frustrating. And so what I did, um, I put together just a little board um, and it has a header, a header for 3.3 volt, a header for five volt and a header for ground, as well as I went ahead and put the piezo. Um, it's a little speaker that will make drive uh, noises when the 1541 is running. And so I thought that might uh, solve some problems. And so what I'll do is I'll just hot glue that um, in the top of the case, and then I'll run jumper wires back and forth between the Pi, and same for this. And then one other thing that's kind of important is the IEC port on the Commodore, which is basically their uh, serial port, is uh, five volts. And the Raspberry Pi is 3.3 volts. And so you need one of these little logic level converters. And so this will convert uh, basically all of the 5 volt signals to 3.3 volts. And so what I did on the cable that I made uh, for the IEC connector, I just uh, again used these JST connectors and I put a little header on it so that I can just pop them together with one click. And so that'll make this really easy to assemble. And again, I'll just probably hot glue that to the top of the case somewhere. Um, and then we'll get started wiring all this up. All right, and before we do final assembly, I'm just going to power it up and make sure that everything is working, and it should be. Um, so there we go. Got the power turned on. Uh, good, the LCD screen is already working. So, yep, we can select images. We'll go ahead and select a jump man. We'll load it. Sure enough, it's mounted it, and it is ready to go. Okay, so that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and do final assembly.
Okay, so that completes the build of the Pi 1541, at least from a hardware side. Now, there's obviously a software side to this, and I didn't go through it here in the video because, to be honest with you, it's a little complicated, and I think it's better suited for a web article. And so if you go to thegeekpub.com, not only will you find a beautiful fritzing diagram and the schematics and all the other stuff you need to wire it up, you'll also find some very detailed instructions on how to install the Pi 1541 software onto the Raspberry Pi's SD card and it's very different than installing Raspbian. So head over to thegeekpub.com for all that information. Let's go ahead and try this thing out and play some games. Well, it's quite obvious that I haven't played uh, Jumpman in quite a while because uh, I suck at it. And so let's try a different game. Ah, uh, yes, Spelunker, one of my favorite old time games. Let's give this game a try. I know how to play it. All right, well that about wraps up our Pi 1541 video. Um, there are a few things I'd like to tell you though right before we go. Um, there are a few things that I would change about this if I was to do it again. Uh, the first one is I would reprint this case. So when I originally printed it, um, I printed it in draft mode and there was a few things that just didn't turn out as nice as I'd like them to, to look. So I probably, in fact I probably will do that anyway. I'll just go ahead and reprint uh, this in high quality mode. Um, and when I do that, the other thing I'm going to change is the back of this was a designed for a Pi 1541, like there's a, a, a Raspberry Pi hat that somebody made, and it's made to hold the ports for that. So what I'll do is close this uh, back area in, and I will um, put a grommet in here for this cable to go through. And so if you have any questions or you're uh, interested in something I did with this, please leave a comment below. Uh, be sure to check out thegeekpub.com. Again, all the information on installing the software, uh, schematics, wiring diagrams, step-by-step -step, uh, instructions on how to put this together, um, all on the site. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.